Hey folks, Roman from Black Diamond Radio here with a quick video for you. This is How To CE240. Okay, first things first, let's go ahead and get the box unpacked. When you open the box, the first thing you will see is the user's manual. You can go ahead and read through this if you'd like. There is a lot of valuable information in here. I will not be covering everything in the manual today, so you might find something that I missed. Let's pull the radio out of the box. The battery is already attached to the radio. We've also got a belt clip here that attaches to the back of the radio. And in this little bag is the antenna for the radio. Let's go ahead and pull it out of the bag. It's just a little stubby antenna for your CE240. Next, we're just gonna go ahead and install the antenna. On top of the radio, you will notice that there is a metal antenna mount. It's got threads on it. The antenna simply screws onto this mount. There's a rubber ring around the mount, and we don't wanna over tighten this and strip the threads. So we're gonna tighten it down to the rubber ring and then give it about a quarter to a half a turn just to ensure that it's tight enough that it doesn't work its way loose over time. Next, we're gonna go ahead and install the belt clip. On the back of the radio, you'll see there are two screws here. We'll just go ahead and take our screwdriver and we will remove both of those screws. Once we get the two screws out, we're going to take the belt clip and we'll line it up with the holes. Once that's lined up, drop your screws back in and we're just gonna tighten them down. Don't crank down on these too hard, but you do want to make sure that they are fairly tight to ensure that they don't work their way out over time each time you clip it on your, uh, your pocket or your belt or wherever you like to carry your radio. Now, anytime you receive a brand new radio from Black Diamond Radio, you will find that the battery has already been attached to the radio, and that is because we have to put the battery on the radio in order to program the radio to your specific frequencies. So before we install the case, I'd like to show you the bottom of the radio. On the bottom here is a little square. It looks like an I or an H. That is a latch for the battery. That latch holds the battery in place and is very important. If you ever need to remove a battery from the radio, then you will want to snap the latch away from the battery towards the front of the radio. You'll just stick a fingernail in there and snap it back. Once that's been snapped, you should be able to slide the battery out without issue. Now, if you ever have to remove the battery from the radio, it's extremely important. When you have replaced the battery and it is slid into place and it is seated, it is extremely important to remember to latch that latch. Okay, once the battery's back in, you need to snap that latch towards the battery and that'll hold the battery in place. That's the back of the radio, towards the back of the radio. Extremely important to remember that once the case is on there, you can't get to that latch and that battery can come loose while it's inside the case, which will cause the radio to turn off. Okay, folks, I've got one of our translucent orange skins here. This is one of my favorite colors. We're just gonna go ahead and slide the radio into the top part of it. Now it might give you a little bit of grief to start, but once you get it on there, things tend to get easier. And once the radio is inside the case, we'll flip the clip, and then that way we can slide it under the clip, and we wanna wiggle it left and right, left and right, until the bottom meets and fits snugly, and then we can flip the top up to match the bottom. And finally, at the end here, we'll adjust the hole to make sure that the indicator light is visible. Okay, so why do we put a skin on the radio? There are actually three reasons for that. Uh, reason number one being shock protection. These are very tough radios, but it never hurts to have a little bit of extra protection. The second reason is that it makes it a lot easier to drop it in the charger. The charger is designed to accommodate a case, so without the case, the radio fits kind of loosely in the charger, and that means you have to finagle it a little bit to get it to charge. Uh, with the skin on there, you can just drop it right in. The third reason is obviously color. Putting these skins on the radios allows you to differentiate between the different units. So if you assign radios to employees or uh, have some kind of checkout system, this makes it much easier to differentiate them. So let's talk a little bit about charging. This is the charger for the CE240. As you can see, it's got some little tracks in the bottom here. Those tracks are extremely important because there are slots for those on the radio itself. 
and that's how the charger holds the radio against the contacts on the inside of this charger. It's extremely important to know that those are there, especially if you're using the radios without skins. You'll notice that the charger does have an LED indicator. This indicator will light red whenever the radio is charging, and it will light green to indicate that the radio is now fully charged and ready for use. Now I've got a CE240 battery here, and I want to show you there's this little slot. Let's get the camera to focus. Okay, there's this little slot here, and that's where the track goes into the battery when you put the radio into the charger. And because it's designed that way, we can put the battery directly into the charger without the radio, and it will still charge. Let's go ahead and put this radio in here without a skin on it. It's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. You've gotta make sure that your tracks are lined up with your slots. And once it's in there, you'll see that the light is red, but it is a bit difficult to do it without a skin. So now I've put the skin back on the radio, and let's go ahead and drop it in the slot. And as you can see, it just drops right in there. There's no complication, it's really simple. Uh, this is why we strongly recommend that all of your radios do have the skins on them. Okay, so now your radios are fully charged. Let's pretend the light was green. Everything is good to go. So let's go ahead and take our radio. We're gonna turn it up a little bit. I'm gonna turn mine up full blast, but you don't wanna do that. On the side, you got three buttons. That's the push to talk. And you've got a monitor button. And then you've got the power button, which is orange. In order to turn the radio on, press and hold the power button for a few seconds. And that's the sound that it'll make when it powers on. From there, it will say the channel name. And you can change the channels by turning this dial. Now if you press the button, push the talk button, you see the light turns red? That's because we're transmitting. So simply press that button, talk into the radio about six inches away from your face. Or you may be using an earpiece. Press and hold the power button and the unit will turn off. So to power it down, press and hold. To power it on, press and hold. And finally, one little bonus tip. If you tap the power button, a flashlight turns on on the top of the radio. That can be a pretty handy little tool. If you tap the button one more time, the flashlight will turn off. And that's gonna be just about it for me today, folks. If you have any further questions about how to operate your Black Diamond radios, please give us a call anytime at 1-800-711-7317. Keep in mind that we do not have a computer system answering our phones. We answer them ourselves, so you will never wait on a long hold. If you need help, do not hesitate to call us. Everybody have a fantastic day, and we'll look forward to the next one.